So let's talk about the juicy guard updates, the 2 plus armor save Ross, and far more flexible and powerful tank and infantry orders. Hello and welcome back to Warspets Tactics, the strategy focus 40k channel, where today we're talking all things Astra Militarum, and in particular how the trio of buffs from the recent balanced data sheets might impact the way that we build guard armies and add to the power of the faction. I thought we'd take each of the buffs in turn and go through it in a bit more depth, starting with a 2 plus save Ross, then going through the orders, and a bit of a summary after that. So I'd say that Ross is getting up armoured is maybe the headline news of the update, just changed in a nice simple statement, saying that any Lehman Ross keyword models will get a 2 plus armour save instead of a 3 plus. I must admit it wasn't a change I was particularly expecting. I know Lehman Rosses are remarkably tough and durable, but they already have quite a decent defensive profile. Toughness 8, a decent save and 12 wounds was already quite a bit to be contending with. I guess they chose to increase the durability of the Ross due to 9th edition weapons getting so much more dangerous, with all the Melter, Cognis Las Cannons and Dark Lance fire that's flying around. There's really quite a lot of tanks out there that feel more fragile than they really should. In any case, it's a really nice boost to Ross durability, though in general it is going to be far better against any low AP anti-tank weapons compared with high ones. For example, here are a few rough numbers on the hits needed to kill a Ross prior to this change. It will be usually 10 missiles, 6 las cannons, or 5 dark lances. That now goes up to around about 14 missiles, 8 las cannons, or 6 dark lance hits. We'll certainly keep them safe from incidental fire a lot better, and just whenever you roll a 5 or 6 to save a high power anti-tank shot, that's really going to be a big deal. Currently, between Rosses and tank commanders, people do tend to favour tank commanders a lot more these days. They've got incredibly efficient firepower, particularly with their orders, and I'd argue that perhaps their main weakness is that they're somewhat fragile for the high cost, and getting a 2 plus armour save will really help alleviate that. Tank commanders, or even regular Rosses with demolisher cannons, were some of the best damage output in the codex, and just getting extra durability on some of our best firepower units makes them kind of even more mandatory than they were before. They were already great, but now it just feels very hard to go wrong with just trundling a demolisher cannon Ross or tank commander down the table at your opponent. Otherwise, the 2 plus armour does change a few things in the Guard Codex. Astropaths and Psychic Barrier will have even more value when applied to tank commanders now. With a plus 1 to the 2 plus save, that's effectively a 1 plus save. And it means that even if you're hit with things like Last Cannon Fire, you'll still be saving on a 4 plus. Anything AP minus 1 would still get hit by a 2 plus save, so it's really going to laugh off an awful lot of damage. Doesn't seem like the worst shout if you do just want to keep one centerpiece model safe. The 2 plus armour does make one of the tank case durability traits a bit worthless now. Up armoured used to increase the save of Lehman Rosses to 2 plus, now they get that on every single Ross. But having the 2 plus save and the minus 1 damage that you can get for the master mechanic one, that could land you with a seriously tough tank commander. I feel like perhaps the value of the Lehman Ross tank case trait has gone up a little bit, now it's a bit more durable. Though I still suspect that we're going to see most people running full payload manticores. Otherwise, Lehman Rosses and particularly Demolisher ones, they were already kind of superior to Bane Blades and most Forge World choices in my mind. Getting a very decent buff to Rosses puts them yet further ahead. Maybe not the best for internal balance in the Guard Codex unless there's a big points rejig. And finally, I would say that while they're a little bit harder to take out, it might make tagging them in melee a bit more of a viable strategy again, as that will still be very good for shutting up any Lehman Ross battle tank with a blast weapon. Still though, overall I like the change a lot, it's definitely a power boost to the guard, and perhaps we'll see some people experimenting with some more Lehman Ross heavy lists. Next up, and also kind of a buff to tank commanders, are that tank orders can now apply to other vehicles, and you don't just have to order Lehman Rosses around now, you can also apply the orders to other regiment vehicles that you still can't order super heavies about. Now normally tank commanders can only order one other vehicle, and I'd say perhaps the most interesting ones are just re-rolling ones to hit on your guns, or using 4th throttle to zoom vehicles about. As perhaps the most competitive guard unit, Manticores with the full payload tankase upgrade seem like a prime target for this. If you're not already playing Cadians, then reroll ones to hit is pretty nice. Could be quite nice to combine that with Catachans or the custom regiment that allows you to reroll the number of shots. I think that might be particularly good to do turn 1, as you might not have any decent enemy targets out there for your tank commanders to shoot. So piling extra damage on your most fearsome artillery pieces does seem like it could be a good use of the order. Next, you could think about doing the same thing for Armoured Sentinels with the big Sentinel Alpha Strike that you can do. Take a big squadron of Armoured Sentinels with Last Cannons and Hunter Killer Missiles, use the stratagem to strike fast, strike hard, and you've got a relatively decent Alpha Strike unit with better accuracy and re-rolling ones to hit. 
Other than that though, just for raw damage, I think that usually it's not going to make sense to order around other guard vehicles, seeing as you normally only get one tank order each, it's usually going to make sense to order the tank commander themselves, as they of course have the, pretty much the best damage in the whole guard codex. I guess there are a few relatively big forge world choices that aren't Lords of War, things like the Malkador tanks, but that would mean that you're taking them over regular Rosses in the first place, guard Rosses are pretty much already superior to them, and now they've got a better armour save, the gap has only got wider. I think for lesser vehicles though, full throttle could be really quite interesting. Often the firepower of things like Chimeras and Sentinels is just going to be a touch underwhelming, and you might get far more value out of double moving them towards the enemy, perhaps to zoom over to steal objectives that you might not have been able to get to, or perhaps even just to get up in their face and use them as expendable screens to move block the enemy. To me that feels like that could be quite an interesting option. Quite nice that you can get the crazy extra movement, and it doesn't have to be on the tank commander, who usually doesn't want to be right at the forefront of the action. Finally, there are quite a lot of guard options that can make better use of orders, certain warlord traits, relics and stratagems, with more flexible tank orders, or those might be worth a second look on your Rosses, particularly if you know that you are going to be sitting by a full payload manticore all game, and it would dearly like some reroll ones to hit. Overall, I think this change is quite helpful, and it is nice to have a few more in-game options, but nowhere near quite as meaningful as the 2 plus Lehman Rust save. Sometimes ordering different things might well be worth it, but often I think the best choice is just going to order the tank commander itself, or order another Lehman Ross. Finally we come to the infantry orders, a buff that I slightly misread when I made the main video. Basically the rule change is that when an infantry officer issues an order to nearby infantry units, you can essentially have that order go off on as many infantry units as you want within 6 inches. So say if you had one officer at the centre of an absolute cluster of guard squads, you could have all of them have first rank fire, second rank fire. It doesn't apply to every single order that the guard has though, it's only a select list. Notable omissions are move, 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 so no enormous mass guardsman sprinting contests going on, and it doesn't work for any of the regiment specific orders either, so it doesn't work with things like the scions reroll wound rolls against hard targets. I think you could either look at this in two ways, you might need fewer officers to cover the entire army with orders if you wanted to, or you could see it as your officers orders going much further and maybe justifying more guard squads in little clusters, all around one officer, who can buff them quite significantly each turn. I do quite like the idea of something like four guard squads all round a company commander, it could be a lot of first rank, second rank last shots coming out of the unit, and then say if the first couple of units got tagged in combat by something, it could maybe issue two orders, the first one to allow the first couple of units to fall back and shoot, or fight again in the shooting phase, and still keep up with a shooting order to buff the back two squads, I do find it quite funny just how much extra firepower these orders could be made by a single officer. Say if you did want to try and stretch things to the max, maybe you could have 3 units of 30 white shield Cadian conscripts around a platoon commander, issue first rank fire, second rank fire to them, and then your 90 conscripts are spitting out anywhere between 180 and 360 strength 3 shots, depending on how close you are to the enemy. That would certainly clear out a whole bunch of light infantry, but to be honest, while they're hitting on fives, it's still not going to do all that much against heavies. I think realistically, going with something like three or four infantry squads might well be the better deal if you actually want to make use of guard infantry damage. I'd say perhaps one of the most interesting interactions with the new orders might be the laurels of command. That sounds like you might be able to double up on orders to a whole bunch of different guard units, if you do have a massive castle of guardsmen all clustered around one officer with the laurels. I think that one might well need an FAQ though just to clarify how it does actually interact with the new order mechanics. In any case, overall I'd say this is definitely a big boost to the guard command abilities. Certainly could make some guard infantry a lot more threatening to other enemy light infantry approaching them, though I'm not sure that we'll be seeing any full foot guard lists doing it massively well. I strongly suspect that we'll still be wanting to take a mix of tanks and infantry in most competitive lists. So overall, I think that the balanced data sheet has certainly been good news for the Imperial Guard, to be very reasonable buffs to them. I'd argue the 2 plus save Rosses is the most meaningful, though having more flexible and powerful orders is absolutely no bad thing at all. I will say that these alone I don't think are going to be enough to make Guard anywhere near a top competitive faction, but they're certainly a decent step in the right direction, particularly in the context of a few of the more powerful armies getting nerfed. I think out of the new combos I'd be most interested in experimenting with some Ross heavy builds, you could put a serious amount of toughness 8 2 plus armor save on the table if you wanted to. Finally, I just thought I'd mention that air cavalry problem again. With restrictions on flyers in match play, it does now mean that you can only take two Valkyries max, so certainly ruins one very fluffy way to play guard. 
If I had to guess, I would suspect that Games Workshop will address this at some point, and maybe the most easy way might be just to say that you can have two flyer choices rather than two aircraft models, as that would allow the guard to use their Valkyrie squadron rule. It means that you could get six Valkyries on the table just for the two flyer choices, which should still be enough for air cavalry lists. You can still certainly play more if you're playing crusade mode or narrative play though. A change was for match play only, and I'm sure plenty of people wouldn't mind making an exception for an air cavalry list. It's a very long way from being the most broken and overpowered thing in 40k. I'd be looking to the next update in that balanced data slate, which they said should be coming in the next quarter of a year, and hopefully they'll iron out that wrinkle. So as always, let me know your thoughts. Are you looking forward to putting more Russes on the table? And how much do you think these changes will alter your lists? Look forward to hearing it all down in the comments below, and we'll certainly be having a read. If you've enjoyed the video, then feel free to subscribe to All Specs Tactics, or I'll certainly keep these regular 40k videos coming. I'm sure we'll have a bit more for the guard as the year goes on. Finally, if you have been enjoying all the videos on the channel, I would just like to mention that All Specs Tactics does have a Patreon page, and you can find that down in the video description. The channel's Patreon is what allows me to make so many videos quite so regularly, and if you are enjoying quite a bit, any support is enormously appreciated. Channel patrons do get a fair few advantages, including seeing certain videos early, regular votes to see what sort of things happen next on the channel, and automatic entry into the regular prize giveaways with a chance to win some really big model kits each month. If any of that sounds good to you, or you'd just like to help support, then the link is down in the video description. In any case, a massive thank you for listening, and I'll hope to see you guys next time.